Hi, how are you this morning? So uh, we're going to be working on uh, axial displacements. So uh, in class, we've uh, seen uh, the formula for axial displacements, and we know that we're using the internal forces over various sections. And so what we want to do is to run through a quick example uh, that solidifies that and shows it uh, its practical applications. So we've got a, a multi-stepped rod here uh, of different uh, areas and different loads apply to different positions along the height. So uh, we're going to resolve that and very specifically we're going to figure out how much it moves or how much it displaces at the top or point A. And uh, at the same time we also want to demonstrate relative displacement. So we're going to say how much does point B move relative to point C. So it's uh, steel, so we have a 200,000 200, megapascal uh, material, uh, and we have two areas for the two different steps shown there. So I'm going to start by drawing the free body diagram. It's a great place to start for uh, pretty much every problem you might do. And so I'm just going to label it here, free body diagram. Um, I've already got a, a line drawn in, so a little bit complicated in this case because we have this multi-stepped and multi-forces applied. But normally when we draw a free body diagram, we only use a center line dimension. And so that's what I'm going to do here. So it starts to, I guess, become a little bit more abstract and you, and you have to be cognizant of that and have to deal with it. So we have our applied loads. So we have 65 kilonewtons here. And then we have applied loads here. And I'm going to combine those two individual ones into a single 30 uh, kilonewtons. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. And we have 60 kilonewtons applied down there. And finally, we have to put in the reaction and uh, in this case, we would have a, a reaction. We don't have to know whether it's going up or down, so we'll just draw it in. Reaction at D. And it's a single uh, dimension problem. There's only one axis. We can call it X. We can call it Y. We, we can do just about anything we want uh, from that perspective. So to resolve this problem, we're going to be a little bit pedantic and we're going to do up a series of partial free body diagrams to demonstrate how, or very deliberately, how we're going to get the internal loads at the different sections of the uh, uh, of, of the column, if you will, uh, of the rod. Uh, we'll learn other faster techniques uh, as we go on. So I'm going to start. I'm going to look at section AB. And I will draw its partial free body diagram. And it's just going to, they're all going to look somewhat the same. And it will have 65 kilonewtons on it there. Now we're, we're cutting it, uh, let me just get, we're cutting it somewhere between A and B. So there's no other externally applied forces. And then we're going to have an internal force, axial force, in here, and we can just call that PAB. And we should label that as our partial free body diagram. And then we would just apply our equation of static equilibrium. It's a one-dimensional problem. We have one equation of static equilibrium. So we would go sum of the forces, I'll call it the y direction here, is equal to zero. Uh, and we'll use positive up. So that's 65 kilonewtons minus PAB. Uh, and that's PAB is equal to 65 kilonewtons. And because of the way we drew that, we see that PAB is in tension. We have a positive number, uh, so we're happy uh, from that perspective. And we're just going to carry on. We're going to do section BC. Do our 
partial free body diagram. It's going to get a little bit longer in this case. And of course, with the partial free body diagram, you're throwing everything away from one side or the other. We're throwing away the bottom half because, of course, we have that unknown down at reaction at D and we don't want to deal with it. So it makes a lot of sense for our purposes to chew, make that choice. We have our 65 kilonewtons still added at the top. Uh, we have our 15 kilonewtons part way down. Oh, sorry, 30 kilonewtons. It was the two 15 kilonewton forces combined. And then that's where our section is drawn. So now we have our internal load, and that's going to be PVC. And we just very repetitively do our statics. So we have some of the forces, y direction equals zero. It's equal to 65 kilonewtons minus 30 kilonewtons uh, minus PBC. And we get PBC is equal to 35 kilonewtons. So we have one more to go. I think I can squeeze it on the page here. Section CD, we'll draw our partial free body diagram. Try to give myself a little bit of room here. Again, we have 65 kilonewtons at the top. Part way down, we have our 30 kilonewtons acting down. Then we have our 60 kilonewtons acting down. leaves our internal force PCD. So again, we're going to apply our equation of static equilibrium. Sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero, is equal to our 65 kilonewtons acting up, minus our 30 kilonewtons uh, acting down, minus our 60 kilonewtons acting down, and subtract that, our PCD. And that tells us that PCD is equal to negative 25 kilonewtons. That means that rather than being in tension, it's going to be in compression. So just as an advancement, what I'd like to do is I'd like to capture that information on our axial force diagram. So I've already prepared for our axial force diagram over here. Uh, we'll do it in kilonewtons. And it's just going to be a pictorial demonstration of what our internal axial forces are across the length. And so as a recap, what we know is between A and B, it's going to be uh, a positive 65 or tension 65. Between PVC, it's going to be positive 35. And then uh, section CD is going to be negative 25 or in compression. So I'm just going to draw that in as a graph over the length of our rod. So we have different values here. And again, it doesn't have to be to scale. I mean, I try to connect these up. These are all supposed to be straight lines. And so I would do some labeling. So minus 25. 35 and 65. And just as a reminder, uh, according to our sign convention, that means that that is in tension, that is in tension, and this is in compression. So I, I go back to the original question, and the question was determine the vertical displacement uh, of end A. So that's the overall displacement from the support at point D. So we have to add up the individual components for e of displacement in each of the sections, DC, CB, and BA. So I'm going to label what I'm doing. You calculate displacement at A. And we know that the displacement at A is equal to the sum of and we'll use our displacement equation. And so it's 
P at I, L at I, over E at I, A at I. And so the I's just re represent the, each of the individual sections of discrete uh, value, if you will. And that, that discretization can come from uh, different internal loads, different areas, or different uh, moduli. So we're going to start at the top and work our way down. And starting then at AB, we have our internal force. And I'm going to do a little bit of conversion here. So we have compatible units going into our equations. Rather than kilonewtons, I'm going to put it in in newtons. So that's 65,000 newtons times the length. And that's the length over which that 65,000 newtons is applied. So that's the distance between A and B, or 500 millimeters off our diagram. And then E. And we're going to put E in in megapascals, so that because a megapascal is a newton per millimeter squared, so it all works out. So 200,000 megapascals times our area. And I'm just going to look up. I see our area AB is 750 millimeters squared. I'm going to add to that the displacement between uh, B and C. So we have our internal force, which is 35,000 newtons. Our length over which it's applied is the 350 millimeters between B and C. And we divide that by our elastic modulus, 200,000 MPA and our area. But in this case, our area has changed. So it's 1,500 millimeters squared. And we go right on to section CD. In section CD, now we have a negative force because it's in compression. So the displacement is actually going to be a, a, a shortening rather than an elongation. So we have 25,000 newtons. And the length between C and D is 250 millimeters. And 200,000 MPA, and its area is the same as BC, or 1,500 millimeters squared. And you run that through the calculator, we get 236.7 millimeters. And that is positive, so it's an elongation. So our rod gets longer overall. A Por portion of it is uh, getting shorter, but most of it is getting uh, longer. So the last question that the problem asks is, what is the relative displacement between B and C? Now, one thing I want to point out is, in some ways, we've already calculated that, because that's right in here. That is the displacement between B and C. So all we have to do is isolate that. So displacement B relative to C is equal to the sum of PL over EA. I can leave off my I's because there's only one uh, discretization. And now I just copy that out again. 35,000 newtons, 350 millimeters all over 200,000 MPA and 1,500 millimeters squared. And that gives us a elongation of 40.8 millimeters. Now, had I gone to the bother of recording interim steps uh, up here, of course, I wouldn't have had to redo that calculation. I would have already had it done. Uh, uh, so that's the problem. So here we see the importance of being able to discern 
the length over which the internal load is being applied and, and then the area associated or the modulus associated with that. So if those change, the areas change or the moduli change, you have to break our section up into those different parts. And we just do the sum of all the different parts and we get our overall elongation and our elongation in this case B relative to C. So uh, hopefully that was helpful to you and uh, we'll see you at the next one.